Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm David, and today we're talking about self-retracting lifelines. We had a specific question come in about a rigid track system with the self-retracting lifeline, and the user wanted to know that since they were doing an inspection, and they were replacing their self-retracting lifeline on that, they needed a little bit of help in picking just the right lifeline for the application. So this specific application, uh, during the engineering process, it was specced out that they were required to have an ANSI Class B self-retracting lifeline. Since then, we know now that there has been a new self-retracting lifeline standard come into play, and it eliminated the old Class A, Class B. Now you have Class 1, Class 2 forces all over the place. So this person wanted to know, kind of, what do I do next? So we just looked at the math. We looked at the forces and the stopping distances of what was previously required in the previous classes. And we compared that to what we see now with the new classes. And we suggested a lifeline based on the forces and the stopping distance that was needed for that particular system. So with the new ANSI standard, there are maximum sets. So you have a maximum arresting, average arresting force of 1,350, maximum arresting distance of 42 inches. So with that, we knew that it didn't quite jive with the old Class B standard. So looking at the forces, we knew now that the device had to have a 900 pound average arresting force and a maximum arresting distance of 54 inches. So that doesn't directly match up with the current standard. So if we just think about the forces and what it means through the system and to the structure, any of these rigid systems that are installed are going to be engineered to the specific building and signed off on by a qualified person and really designed specifically for that area and for that solution. So if the self-retracting lifeline goes farther in force, then you have to look at your system, you have to look at your fasteners, you have to look at your structure, how those all things work together, and you may need a brand new evaluation just to switch out lifelines. So we found when evaluating multi-dynamics devices, you know, your gut instinct tells you, oh, it's gonna be a class one because that's what's replacing the old class A, class B. However, we actually found out that our class two, when used overhead, because it has an additional shock absorption device, it actually exceeds the standard of the previous class B. So it has an average arresting force of 900 pounds and a maximum arresting distance of 42 inches. The solution that we found was suggesting using a 20 or 30 foot edge hog self-retracting lifeline that exceeded the minimum standard for forces and also met right on the stopping distance for the old class B. So in conclusion, what we want you all to do is take a look at the labeling, the manuals, and contact the manufacturer when, when evaluating these new self-tracting lifelines. Because we mentioned there are maximums set on these devices. Not all the devices are equal in the field. And we're available on our website. We're available on a toll-free number. We're almost available 24-7, 365. If you have a lifeline system that's permanently installed, chances are it's installed under a certain set of parameters. And just replacing it with any lifeline that you find could put you at risk.